that's safe. Hold on. Grand Master, I know got ball head, so you jumped that back a little bit for me. So, uh, but good evening, brother. Good evening. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, did get the cop call today. <laughs> Had to work, uh, but I definitely wasn't going to miss this uh, moment of conference. First of all, the God who is the head of my household, Jesus Christ, who I follow. Uh, no disrespect to no religion. Uh, to all Grandmasters, Pat, Grandmaster Jar Weston Jarvis. To my good friend, Chris Jackson, one of the only worship masters I know that pack a lot. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, before we started, everyone can give a moment of silence. Uh, Keep watching. You know, we was always taught to walk by faith, not by sight. You know, we believe that in Freemasonry, that's who we truly are. So if you believe that his presence is here, just close your eyes and walk by that faith and know that he's in here at this time. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Pastor Grandmaster Weston John, for uh, putting this together and dedication to him. A lot of brothers we know have gone home including with Zeno, um, that we haven't did a lot of things. Um, when Keith Washington died, I had a member of my grandma she died. Also, when with Zeno died, I had a member of my grandma she died. At the same time, also, that was the same time as Grandmaster Hawkins in the grand session. You know, we have an obligation to take. What I want to talk to us about today is um, this simple, just for a second. You know, I phoned Ladia, so I'm not going with that, and I didn't prepare a lecture. Um, Chris Jackson came to my grand session last week, get me motivated. Just gonna speak from the heart if you guys don't mind. And a plug. trust me, it won't be 30 minutes. It won't even be 20 minutes. <laughs> it get good, it won't even be 15. <laughs> so, like all pastors, more amens, more quick we can get. <laughs> <laughs> but this something right here, you know, we got this ritual that we got and we got this pamphlet that we got. And it always says, what is this? An emblem. An emblem of what? My profession. What is your profession? That of Freemasonry. Make sure you remember that <laughs> at the end of this lecture. Again, this symbol, this is an emblem, an emblem of what? Freemasonry. What is Freemasonry? A beautiful system of morality. We have now we are illustrated by symbols. My brothers, I want to talk to you a little bit more because we always get stuck to that. And they say if you want to hide something from a black man, stick it in a bullet. Ooh. So I want to tell you about this emblem that you so-called say is of that of your profession. Because a lot of us don't live by, a lot of us just fake it. And I'm not here to fake it, I'm being real. Because a lot of us, as I talked to Chris Jackson earlier, we all played this story of this man called, what's his name? Yeah, you played that story, boy. You really that story. See, Herman Biff had a lot of things behind him. Because if you go back to your ritual, it tells you this here, play toy. It says you had nine emblems of a master mason. Go See, ahead. we get too stuck in sticking to that square comes in G. It said nine emblems of a master mason that you had. And you'll know one of them will be broken to a class with different signs. I took from this brother lecture and my lecture and just life experience. And today I'm going to use not on a friendship base or anything. I'm using for real life experience with past Grandmaster Weston Jarvis. And I'm definitely using the history and the legacy of Keith Washington. We all was neither naked nor clothed, barefooted nor shoe. We all had this cable to about our head on three different occasions. You know, you always quick to tell somebody of an inner apprentice, hey, brother. You know, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. Are you really doing it? Mm -hmm. See, I heard earlier they talked about a cable toe. That cable toe has two ends to it. Mm -hmm. Everything you bound him to, you better make sure you're doing the same thing. See, I respect the inner apprentice from the day he come through the door because he took the obligation not knowing nothing. Some of us take this obligation knowing that what we need to do, and you still got that in my mind, and you still ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. You still ain't doing it. So when you bound that inner apprentice to learn his obligation, I'm asking you right now, you've been in the game 10, 15 years, do you still know your obligation as an apprentice by heart? I'm sorry, they ain't picked up the book, it's still Chris. Ain't that what you said? Because mm -hmm. if you're reading your ritual on section three, and let's just look to these or Duncan's ritual, it'll tell you about these nine emblems. But I bet we can't name them off the top of our head, though. Because if you put them 33rds on, you put those 95ths on, you put those <laughs> emblems on, and now you see an inner apprentice come through and say, yeah, you want to be where I'm at. Brother, do you even know where you at? <laughs> Drake say sometimes you're standing in the field, but you really ain't in the field. I just want you to understand that. So back to these nine emblems of a master mason. <laughs> if you are a true mason, stop saying about that square comes in jail. What happened to your pure heart? Because that's the first thing that was taught to me. Because it said a pot of innocence is nothing but emblem of a pure heart. Brothers, a lot of times we come through these doors and we sit in a room with men who don't even have a heart to love us or care for us or pray for us. Mm. You gotta have a pure heart to be a mason. 
It's time out for oh, need the nigga no clothes. Is he a man of free born? Is he uh, worthy, well qualified? Brother, before you walk in there, do you have a pure heart? One thing that's actually about their heart, and whom you put your trust in. It didn't say Jesus Christ. It didn't say Allah. It just said deity. You can't put your trust in man how, and, and God. How can you follow a man? Because earlier somebody said something about being a shepherd, being a leader, that we forget that sometimes we think by service somebody they consider us a yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm paying attention in here. I trust you. I'm not just listening to these brothers talk. I'm taking knowledge back to take to my grandlords to my members. So if you don't have a pure heart, that's the first emblem that it taught you as a master mason. Sometimes we forget when we get raised from a dead horizontal to a living perpendicular, we just have to see the apron and put it on. It says you have to have a pot of incense, which represents a pure heart. A pure heart has to come here knowing that he can love someone who he do not know. <coughs> Remember that you said you was going to follow someone that you couldn't even see who later on you found out to be a friend that became a brother of yours because of the obligation you took. you got to have a pure heart. <coughs> I gave a lecture before and I told you before, if you ain't a man, you ain't a mason, you ain't an architect, you ain't a mason. If you ain't an S, a servant of God, you ain't a mason. If you ain't an overseer, you ain't a mason. You ain't got network, you ain't a mason. But I'm going to tell you, brother, if you ain't got a pure heart, that's one of your rooms. Pot answers. Do you really know what it means? Do you know when they went and seen the Savior that you say that you got him out of three wise men to get there? They like a the perfume and everything and a pot of innocence to go there. If you really got your high degree, talk to me and roll up. If you're a shrine, you're supposed to have it in there too. So calm down. It lets you know in every house, it's supposed to be innocent and pure in the house. So when you come into the blue lodge, where that pure heart is? Go ahead. Not the fake heart, the pure heart. Mm. All right. Next, you're supposed to have the other emblem, which is the beehive. We call our lodges the beehive and everything. Do you really know what a beehive does? It's work. industry. It's work. It's an emblem of industry. See, first you got to have that pure heart. That's the emblem of it. Now you got an emblem of industry. You got to be able to work together. I didn't actually your grand lodge. I didn't actually your supreme. I didn't actually your Masonic Congress. I didn't actually your criminal right. I didn't actually your York right or nothing. Brother, are you here doing the same thing I'm, I'm supposed to do? Because b besides all these degrees as a fellow craft, you said you would help aid and assist a brother disagree. That's just as a fellow craft. I ain't even made your master mason yet. Ooh. So we can work together and bond together. It says from the highest shepherd to the lowest servant. We got to work together. You see ass, they don't even talk. They just keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. You can't have a beehive if you try to, try to tear down the hive. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 A beehive works together. See that bee? You, you never seen a beehive get built. You always see them. Product of it because they work in silence. Because what goes on in my watch house it, stays in my it, house. Before you judge my grand lodge, I told him this weekend, right? Sweep around your front door before you try to sweep around mine. Mm -hmm. See, when oh. these bees working in this house, they ain't worried about the beehive in the back of the house. Yeah, They're yeah. working on the beehive in the front yeah. of the house. This is their house. They work together. And if you pay attention from the highest shepherd, when ants work together, they're working on that ant bed down below. They ain't worried about what the bees doing. They take care of that. That's how you continue to grow. Ah, that's that's how you continue to grow in both. I'm going to get there for you. Yeah. Next, you have the emblem, the sword, and the book of Constitution. Brothers, to work together after you are, you got to have order. You got to teach these members. Stop acting like you just net. Teach them. You got to have a sword cut uh, over the book of Constitution. That's the bylaws and rules, brothers. If a brother can't follow rules, he can't follow man rules. He definitely can't follow God mm -hmm. rules. Right? See, God gave us the first rule book, which was the Bible, which we can't even follow the Ten Commandments. We all fall short, but who is we to blame? But therefore, if he can't follow that ritualistic that he came in, you ask him, do you believe in God? You didn't say which God. If you believe in Muhammad, are you going to follow Muhammad rules? Because if you can't follow that rule book, how can you follow the bylaws, Constitution, or most of Abraham, Grand Lodge text if you can't follow that rule book? Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. We have to be that on one accord. Teach, teach. The next, the sword piercing the naked heart. Brothers, you ain't always got to correct a brother and tell them what they're doing. You definitely ain't got to clean up what another brother doing. I always say sweep around your front door before you try to sweep around mine. Brother, it taught you on the five points of fellowship that you walk off all danger. Keep the secrets of a brother. And it's ill you'll give good counsel. It didn't say you'd be messy and tell that brother what this brother doing and tell that brother what's going on. You got to understand that sooner or later, justice overtakes. Wow. Yes. I got friends who disrespect friends. I got friends who blast people on Facebook, this and that. But it seems to me, I stay out of that. You might not know, but sometimes the health fail real quick. Ain't that what you said? The health fail real quick. Because you know why? Sometimes you ain't got to fight the battle let God fight your battle. See, that's the emblem of your profession that the sword pierces the nigga heart. Sooner or later, justice will overtake him. And if you read it closely in your Master Mason 
book on Nelson Letizia Section 3, it says God would do that, not you. Continue being an upright man. Mm -hmm. Continue being a squat man. It taught you when you look at this little symbol, the compass teaches you to keep you in due bounds with all mankind, more especially a brother. Mm -hmm. See, that's how we stay out of trouble a lot of times because we're keeping ourselves in due bounds with people who are on the same agenda as us. But if you worry about people who are not on your agenda, that's when we fall short. There you go. That's when we fall real short. When you get that down, you got another symbol. I ain't a fisherman, but I know this guy that met three fishermen. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, he met a few, three, three other little guys that met a fisherman. They couldn't get somewhere. But don't look at the story of that. Look at the allegory of it. It even taught you when he gave you a story of a man who went through trials and tribulations, said three men went to a fisherman. Later on, you found out that that boat had an anchor. That's another emblem of your profession. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know all of them, it takes more than one working tools. It says when that anchor dropped down, that's a hope of well-grounded faith. Yes. These men talked earlier about it. you got to have the foundation now. See, you take that boat, you drop that anchor, no matter what goes on, you stuck there. If you claim to be a true mason and a real mason and be there in your heart, guess what? You stand by what you stand on, that anchor is there. And no matter when the trials and tribulations come, God even told you, when the wind blow, if that anchor down, that boat ain't going nowhere because your foundation is solid. Come on. It's sink yeah. down into it. That's if it. you really believe you're a mason and you say you are and you live by the things you do, you ain't got to worry about what others say. Your life ain't for everybody. Mm -hmm. Your journey ain't for everybody. Mm -hmm. Your travels ain't for everybody. Mm -hmm. You respect mine, I respect yours, but if we hear on the same one accord, behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Stop it. Let's just say it real. Behold how good and pleasant it is for masons to dwell together in unity. That's what we hear. Mm -hmm. Let's be real with it. When you look at the next two, you got the 47th problem of Eglu. Now we get into the sixth one, right? We want the sixth one. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Abraham and H.B. Turner, Mount Turner equals the same thing. Brothers come together on one accord. You don't believe three grand lodges in Texas come together on one accord? Well, then you don't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! You don't believe in the mother, the Man. son, and the child. You don't believe in none of that. You don't believe in faith, hope, and charity. It told you as an apprentice from the get-go, it takes three. Come on, man. You talking about you want to start a lodge? It takes three men, right? Worst man, see you one, junior one. They said holy bottle, square, compass, faith, hope, and charity. Rough answer, perfect answer. What? And trust the boy? Come on, man. Everything came in three. So if you don't believe it, if, if us three agree, that's in another house. Come on. It takes three of us. <laughs> Mathematics of the 47 problem of Eclu made by our brother Pythagoras, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, means things have to come together in unity to be as one. Quit throwing up the sign and quit saying you're a dynasty and a legacy and you ain't living by it and trying to put it together. Mm -hmm. When you look at the last two, come on brothers, we talking about the hourglass that represents time. Mm -hmm. Freemason is not mandatory, it's something we chose to do on our own free will and accord. Yes, what you gonna do with your time? The hourglass is letting you know for the day you're born, it's tipped over. You can't see it because you're still walking by faith and hope shouldn't be lost, lost in the bondage, right? It can't be lost. You still going with that hourglass, how much time you got left? Are you playing Mason or are you being a Mason? Mm. <laughs> Use your time wisely. Are you here to build or are you here to destroy? Oh, yeah. See, I read this poem and the poem was talking about builders. Which is this man we know as Herman Bill. We, when we see Herman Bill, we say, hey, here lies the builder, Maha Bone. If you don't know, that's what he wrote. <laughs> Let's get back to it. But you see this person, they build this monumental building, which we taught as in the principles. We're supposed to be building a spiritual temple within ourselves. You hire somebody, you got your own construction company, you know people do this thing. You build it. It takes somebody who's an architect, M A S O N, A is architect or true builder. You're building something. But when things don't go right and it's time to move on, you still got to hire a professional, someone who says this is their profession. They bring a wrecking ball to the site. You went to Ebony Worthy, and I'm watching you every day. We get ready to lay the cornerstone on you, Bill. I get with you on that. We're going to take care of that together. Set aside a problem. Real talk. So, because the last principal was on base, and he just left, and the new principal, she's the Eastern Star of Miss Campbell. But when you hire a new help, they tearing out Worthy, right? Yeah. Are those real professionals? Or are they just breaking things? See, we get the title mixed up. Wow. See, you have somebody lay down a foundation, draw our graphs, draw our pipelines, everything, to really be a builder and be an architect. 
when it didn't work out, somebody came through to tear it up. That's what's called a record. Are they really a builder? Or are they a record? It's the same thing that goes in our large and grand large. Or some of us help to, to build, or they question everything the grand master say. Mm -hmm. He's not the grand master no more, but every time he opened up his mouth to give his experience, are you questioning him and downing him, telling him that he's running him? Or are you telling me that Drew is running me? Are you a destructor, a wrecker, or are you really a builder? Because if you ain't got no solution to the problem, then <laughs> you ain't no builder. I'm going to let you know right off the top. The last one is that of the set, which is the eight. The set cuts time in half. The set cutting the time in half cuts us from this life to the present life. It's the same thing it taught you when you became proficient on masonry. You went to the next degree. God tells you if you believe in him, no matter what religion, when you complete your work over here and your job is done and you're proficient, that set will cut that time in half and put you in another place. The same place our brother keep watching in. Because his life is a legacy. Because he's did everything that he's supposed to have. He's supposed to have a pure heart. He did that. He contributed to the church. He contributed to his family. He got grandkids. He got a daughter here. They're Western Drivers and Rick Wells and Grandmaster Fillmore and everybody's putting them on mental conference together. If you know the brother like you're supposed to know him, he worked with everybody on a permanent right. He went in a different field and did a different scholarship right. But no matter he was in, he helped anybody that he could help. He had that same heart. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, just overtake it. God had blessed him tremendously. Yes. He buried a brother today in less than 12 hours. He was already gone. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that, but he was still living his obligation, which we can't even get people in Houston, Texas to go to a brother funeral in Houston, Texas. Woo! Mm -hmm. Man! But you talking about you and Mason. See, mm -hmm. keep watching the hands that he had that justice sooner or later take us. He let brothers take care of that. He had the book of Constitution because he kept order. If not, Obadiah wouldn't succeed today with the help of friends because he made those connections. Mm -hmm. He kept order together. That was our theme this year, huh, Chris? That's right. Order. You got to have order to succeed. If you look at the brother, he used his time wisely. He had an anchor and all put into the ground. That's what Keith Washington did. He was lived no matter what the trials and tribulations came with him, sickness and health, he stayed on that ground. He was there. If you don't believe me, God told you in the Bible that you read. He told somebody to get off a boat. That boat was in the middle of the water, right? Same water when the anchor and all gets started to walk to them. When they took their eyes off the vision, when they took their eyes off the Grand Master's plan instead of their plan, when they took their eyes off God's vision, they started to sink. God said, hey, keep on. I told you, follow me. That anchor's already sunk. I got you. Sometimes we lose faith in God and lose faith in our lords or our leaders, but you don't know what they do behind the scenes. That's yeah. Wow. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You just have to take that. But that last one, Keith Washington showed everything, and the set cut his time from here and put him in the place of God in the kingdom of him, on the right side of him. He followed everything that the nine emblems, not just what you see here, what is this, an emblem, emblem out of fish. He didn't follow that. He followed every emblem there was, but it's a knife. It says the spade, the acacia, and the coffin. The spades which dug his grave, the coffin which held his remains, and the acacia that hid in his grave. Brother, it let you know that's a strong man back with those three again. It took three things to complete his resurrection to the other side of the earth. Yes. A spade that we know as a trial of the spirit, brother love, this spade opened the grave for him. It's things that the spade will do for you to open doors for you that you don't know. A coffin which held his remains. When you and your large, your large should be holding you. When you get to a different degree, it says the coffin represents a sign of destruction of evil. Mm -hmm. Some of us walk through the door, even I'm sorry, you forgot the pure heart. <laughs> you forgot the pot in the get You forgot an acacia. That bloomed his grave. Today, because of Western Jarvis, we still celebrate Keith Washington's life. The acacia represents immortality of the soul. It means he lives on and on and on. Right. If you do the funeral right to the grave, we can sign him more than remains of his uh, this dead lost brother. His memory cherished his spirit to give to God who gave it. But when you, lay, on, when you lay the apron on his coffin, you put everything down in, it tells you that it represents a symbol of immortality of the soul which shall never die. Mm -hmm. Keep reading your obligation like you're supposed to on your knees and quit wearing them fizzes like you somebody and you understand that he can walk and tell you what to dead, dead, dead. You understand. <laughs> but I want to show you about this person because you can't blame and say you trying to teach the ace return trying to do. Nah. You trying to teach Abraham trying to do. You trying to teach what United Grand Lodge Florida trying to do. Ain't nobody trying to do that. 
You put on that blindfold, bro. You got down on the ground. You got hit in the head. Mm -hmm. You acted like Herman Biff. You was raised from a dead horse on to a living purple dick. And I'm telling you, the nine emblems of Herman Biff that you portrayed as a man, these are the nine emblems of a master mason, not just a square comes to G. So when you read that little card, that's a good little catechism. I like that. That's real cute. In the wrong fashion, what is your profession? Have a good mason, beauty system, morality. Pleasure to meet you, brother. Pleasure to know you. That's, that's real cute. But let's talk about the true emblems that you're supposed to possess as a master mason. Are you really doing it? Because Herman Biff played that role. And you played it as him. So I ask you this question all the time. When you look at the nine emblems, now it's time to get real. Man, I filled out an application. Got in the United Grand Lodge of England to visit. Some people looked at them because of the skin color. Attacked them on Facebook across the world. I'm not a native primitive, right? You know, we brothers, I love Jarvis to death. Brothers don't always communicate so you can keep that trash talk. But well, I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm not his primitive, right? But because he went a different route and went to Bulgaria, he got his own primitive, right? Because somebody else is tripping and you got to record this, and I'm real with it. <laughs> and then he's succeeding and teaching others. People want to down him. And it ain't the other people on the camera, right? It ain't the other people. <laughs> it's us that's down on another black man. Yes. You down them to the fullest. We don't agree or disagree on everything, but we're too busy tearing each other down, mm -hmm. being records, not builders. We forgot the nine emblems of our profession, but you want to put that hat on, you want to put that square comes to chin on. It's a lot to go behind it. If you're really being funny and playing that catechism, it says what stands behind this a good man. Mm -hmm. Everything that rolls with it, those same nine emblems. If you ain't up to the job, quit. Whoa! <laughs> People will die on your chair. They will say, oh, he's grand law born. He think he this and that. Yeah, you can say that about me. Yeah, I drive a BMW. I five cars. Hey, brother, two or three of them paid for. My wife takes a job. Seriously, I do. Stop running about my grand law. Run about your. Cause see, the mainstream got ninety-seven lodges. So while you talking about Drake Jones got twelve, you worried about me. We competing with each other. This person still winning because they got ninety-seven. They told the other one, Uncle Tom. Hey, we recognize you. Now you go tear them up while we sit back here. It's called a hit in the They pay money to wear. Somebody got to wear it and be true behind it and know what it means. Yeah. So you want to talk about chemical in Africa, and I understand that, and I go deep with it, but I don't go too far deep because I don't know that much about it. I don't even know my great, great, great grandfather, but I heard about Freemasonry in the background. Hey, these are your nine emblems. Some people call mainstream, some they just wait. They don't even have, can have a conversation with you. That's right. These are my nine emblems. But let me tell you something. If I disrespect you in any type of way, you got it on camera tell you, hey, brother. I apologize, I'm not always right. I'm not. And I love you to death. Okay. Same thing to Grandmaster Rick. A few more people try to bring stuff about our grandmas because they see the growth and they see the positive. And when we get to New Orleans, we're going to be as one. And we're going to rock the house, whatever Texas want to do. But you got to be as one, not only just as Texas, but as Black Freemasons as yes. a whole. Yes. Yes. People always say, well, we can come together as one. Here's the science. We get all these different entities to follow behind this symbol, the nine emblems. Big shit now, John G. Jones, International Money Free. We all be one. Yeah. Then we join the three other brothers, and we all be one. Now go tell the other person that we all coming over here and be one. Then somebody in the middle, now nah, we're going to keep our history. Now nah, we're going to do this thing. Come on, brother, you can't talk about it. Be about it. Mm. But I tell you this, and I'm telling everybody what is integrity? <laughs> integrity is who you are when no one else yeah, is around. Right. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. My lecture today, and it's quoted. Yes. No matter what they say about you, you, our friendship, your friendship, our friendship, whether we talk every day, we follow and keep watching the legacy, right? We know what he stand for. We know what Herman Biff stand for. If you don't ever forget, let a hater talk. Let people try to bring you down. You keep moving. Because you know why? The message of the same person we've been talking about today, which is what's the job, was just keep watching, and also Herman Biff. The message that they all leave for me every day, whether you believe it or not, my life you can have, my integrity never. <laughs>